morning. How do you wake up in the morning? A lot of times, most people, you know, they have this idea of, well, until I've had my morning cup of coffee, I'm really not that happy a camper. You know, they wake up kind of like groggy and froggy and foggy and kind of thinking and stinking and not really into where or what the day has to bring for them. They require that caffeine fix to begin to get their body moving, their inner self, so to speak, metabolism, kind of pumping and jumping, you know, and stumping out that hormonal things that they need and fluids that they need to their brain and oxygen to the cells and kind of like all the good stuff, you know, vitamins and all the other junk that basically has kind of come to a rest while you're sleeping. Not really, because it still goes on, but basically that's the idea. The physical body begins to become connected to the mental mentation or thought process. And the two sometimes don't jive, so people grab a cup of coffee, suck that sucker down, or jump in the shower, you know, to wake up. All those things are good, but you know, if you spend so much time with waking up your physical body, don't you think that your spiritual body kind of needs some, you know, kickstart too? I mean, after all, you are a spiritual being inhabiting a physical body. Me, I like to get up in the morning because I'm usually up before the dawn. You know, I like to get things rolling or kind of spend a little momentary time of my own. You know, on the internet, I'll admit, you know, and doing some quick research, you know, as far as like news articles are concerned, because I'm pretty quick at it, I'm pretty fast. I have my sources and my ability to discern, you know, what is true and what's false, and then verify the things that I don't know or prove or see what things are new or conflicting with what's already been said. So I enjoy that little bit of time, but I also spend some time with God just admiring what He has done and prepared for me today. I look at the sunrise and I say, oh God, thank you for putting me where I am today. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of seeing another sunrise. Thank you for letting me enjoy the growth process that there is going through the seasons of life, whether a young man, an old man, a young woman, old woman, whether you're a mother or father, whether you're a child or adult. I am so much happier to have been through my younger years to ride to this destination where I'm in my older years because of the wisdom that God has brought along my way. I don't really, I mean, as far as the Word of God's concerned, I tried to tell my sister this once and she completely rejected the idea. I said, Really, as far as the Word of God is concerned, I, I haven't learned all that much new. I said, but I have applied a lot of experiences to what God did with me when I first got saved. Because really, when I got saved, man, God just flooded me with all this unbelievable knowledge. Boom. It was crazy in those days. But you see, although I had a lot of biblical knowledge suddenly instilled in me, I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I ran right out, tried to witness to every single person and living being there was. You know, and it didn't work too well. But experience brought me to a place of my personal relationship that I needed to walk with God. I needed to talk with God. I needed to listen to God. Learn that the hard way. And it took about 30 years, maybe plus some, to really get that down to a science where I could really depend on what God was telling me each day and every day of what to do it His way. Because you see, I know how to do it my way. And I even know how to do it your way. And I could probably do your way better than you could do your way. <laughs> Which really is about saying both of us could screw up pretty bad. But instead, I like to set my day in the right direction. I like to focus myself into doing those things that are profitable to me, that really I get a return on my investment, the best possible time well spent. And you know, coffee works for a lot of people that way. Some people have to jump up and run down to a Starbucks, you know, because that's kind of like they're socializing 
for their physical and emotional well-being. You know, well, that's good. But their spiritual well-being likewise needs to be taken into account. And that's where I use daily life. Like, kind of recently, I know Greg Laurie mentioned he'd been doing it for about 30 years, and I've been doing it quite a while. And we all enjoy daily life simply because it's snapshots of the scriptures that are put together in some some context, you know, and it gives you just the Word of God, and that's it. But I like to share more than that. I like to expand on and sometimes appreciate more being able to identify and relate in a personal, intimate way how Jesus is making that fit in my life. And that's why we share daily light. You know, we, we enjoy it as part of our morning routine as something to be done and to enjoy with you with each other, with trying to encourage each other by speaking to one another in psalms and songs and spiritual songs as God has it to do. Because it's easy to put on, you know, some Christian music and think that, oh, well, that should have the Word of God in it. Why not? Nowadays, contemporary Christian music doesn't necessarily have the Bible in it. Sometimes it just has a lot of cute stories, you know, that make you feel good, but has no basis or no necessarily a solid word of God in it. Matter of fact, a lot of it nowadays is just kind of ballads and feely kind of stuff, you know, touchy-feely music. And that's good in its time and its place. But you know, for me, I prefer sometimes just the word of God as God is speaking to me. How about you? Who can say I have made my heart clean? The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all, all together, become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. To will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I don't know. For the good that I would do, I don't do. But the evil which I don't want to do, that I do. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us astray. When I think about that, you know, I, I really look at more the Christian than I do the non-Christian, because the non-Christian just acts according to what his natural instincts are, which is according to the flesh. But for the Christian, we have the choice, really, to ask God at any point in time in our day to lead us. As a Christian, we have any point in time of our day to ask God and have the ability to hear Him, because He said, today, if you hear His voice. So, whenever something's going wrong in my day, I usually stop. You know, I'll grab my wife or whatever may be at the point in time that I think something's going wrong. I say, you know, something's not right. I need to reevaluate. I need to back up, backtrack, and see where I went off track because I don't think this is the way that God intended my day to go. And that doesn't mean that, you know, when trials come that that's an off track or a backtrack reason. Sometimes I know that a trial's coming and I'm ready, willing, and able to go through it because I know it's for my benefit. But sometimes you just know that, you know, Maybe I didn't get in the Word today. Maybe I didn't prepare myself to hear Him or see Him. Or maybe He said, go to the left, and I went to the right. And you kind of know that pretty quick, because you kind of head down that way, and you go, ah, it doesn't seem right. So you recheck your calibrations. You double-check your map. You reprogram your GPS to make sure you're back on course. Because if you've gone off course at some point in time, you really need to have discourse in order to find your correction to be put back on course so that your recourse is to go the way God wants you to go as opposed to the way you're going. I don't know about you, but I like to begin my day with God that way and end it that way. Because in between times I may go astray, but I always like to go back to the way that he's chosen for me to go today. Funny how that all alliterates in some way. <laughs> The scripture has concluded all are under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus might be given to them that believe. 
God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. People have this idea that somehow grace can take away any realization of the fact of sin in our life. And the fact is, God imputes to us righteousness. God doesn't just say, oh, well, you're perfect now. You know, you, you know, I want you to be the best you can be. and Go out and, you know, try and do your best. And, you know, guess what? You know, you're okay. No, God decides whether he will impute to you his righteousness or whether he will say, uh-uh, you need to clean up your act. <laughs> because belligerence in faith belligerence and sin. In other words, that rebellious spirit that we have as human beings cannot exist in the same place of God's grace being given to us by His mercy. It's by His loving kindness, by His love itself, that we find ourselves forgiven. But don't mistake God for being some kind of like wishy-washy God that He doesn't require us to be perfect. He does. Should He remove grace, which He could, should He say that no, you have not fallen under the blood of the Lamb, so to speak. You are not one of my children, as Jesus said he would do to some people. Then you may find yourself standing in your own righteousness before God, and that's not a place any one of us want to be. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all need to come under the blood of the Lamb so that we would find ourselves trusting in Him and not trusting in our own ideas about Him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every one of us, every day, will sin. No, really, we, we will. There's no doubt about it. You will sin today somewhere, somewhere along the way. God's standard, somewhere up here out of sight that you can't see, you will fail to reach that standard for today. And in as in as much as God has given it to us, then we need to appropriate grace for today. We need to apply His mercy by asking Him to forgive us, by allowing Him to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, by recognizing it's an ongoing, not a one-time thing, that we are continually needing to be cleansed from our sinful ways. Because irregardless of how good you may think you are. As far as God is concerned, He wants great. And you're not great. I'm sorry. No matter how good you think you are. Jesus said it this way. Call no, call no one good except your Father which is in heaven. And if that's the standard, God being the only good, and I hate to say it, there's nothing good about you. There is something that God has done for you but the good that you would, you do not, and that which you would not, you do, then who could deliver you from this body of sin that you live in? Only God. And only God can forgive you, and only God can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So today, when you hear his voice, as you do, when you walk with him, as you will, when you talk with him, as you should, then recognize that even though you may blow it, even though you may show it by your actions and deeds and words and thoughts and attitudes, God still loves you and still wants to bring you to the place of mercy and grace so that you would be able to extend to someone else the same love, the same mercy, the same grace, and the same forgiveness that he's given you.